Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba and family. Welcome to our Black Star Pan African community uh, meeting. Today's date is December 4th, uh, and it's a beautiful Sunday. So, thank everybody for joining us. And what we want to do, as usual, is to just give updates about our wonderful community. Um, I'm Bomani Tamba, I'm the community president uh, slash uh, business administrator. And then we have our vice president, Azibo, which is also the manager of the office there in uh, Ghana. So we have a two part operation to where uh, we're running business operations from here in Georgia. And we have all the setups to just get you all cleared on uh, land acquisition there in Ghana on our 15 and 60 acres. So the thing we all tell everyone, if they need to be there in Ghana to physically see the land, that's why we have the office there where they can see the 15 acres and also the 60 acres. And if they need to meet the chief, we have the chief available. So right now we're getting ready for our December 29th presentation on the land. Uh, so with the land, we're doing land maintenance, clearing the land, uh, have security um, uh, set up to this monitor and manage uh, the land and make sure that uh, pillars and things that are broken or things that need to be fixed up looks real good. That way we will bring our big Ghana group there, a group of 20 of us coming uh, in December. Uh, they can see the presentation and see the growth from what we started uh, literally three years ago. Our first time to visit the land was literally three years ago and that was December, 2019. And, and you know what happened after that, December, uh, after December, 2019, it was the year 2020. And that was the year of the, the pandemic, pandemic and uh, of the COVID-19 uh, era. So uh, during, so we started before that time frame, and then we have continued and progressed and shown the test of time. And our main focus over the three years have always been make sure that um, you know, we have a foundation to where the paperwork is good, the land is good, the relationship with the chief, the people, the community, the town is good. And then we, then we can get members access to all of their legal paperwork, which we have done. To now the second floor of people that need land surveys, we're closing out on those land surveys so we can have a fresh energy of people who are ready to build. So these are the things that we have organized to where uh, once you clear on these things, we can get you ready for land process. So the email that I usually send out is the email with all of the legal documentation application and all the need to know. Um, overview of the community. And these are also some of the details that's physically on the website. So for those who have read those information, they should be clear. And then for those who wanna have additional questions, uh, we can always answer those questions. And one of the other things that anyone that has more interest can do is visit that land. And then we have a designated office to where once you get there, you can just relax a little bit, use a restroom. Um, you can get yourself organized because that's a two hour drive from Accra uh, to, uh, land Jahadzi, which is in between Accra and Cape Coast. And we're right there on the coast, literally about two miles away from the beach. And because we wanted to have a nice community where we can eventually build a beach town, a beach community, uh, and with aspects of technology business and doing a lot of um, growing as far as fruits and vegetables and creating a nice ecosystem, but also at the same time to create an area where we can get land from the African diaspora and be comfortable with knowing that uh, we're, we're with a group that have basically literally worked the last three years to make sure that everything is in place to where when you're ready to build now, you can build and just enjoy your, you know, your setup that you have in Africa. As, and also along with that, our goal is always to be able to help people from getting from passport to visas to resident permit. And eventually we'll work it out for citizenship, which will take us some time. But um, once we finish our legal, um, you know, we get our final, uh, you know, final deed and title. And uh, those are things that can open things up for us to get the things that we need after residency, which is citizenship. So these are some of the ways that you can come into a country like Ghana and get the things that you need and be a part of an established organized group that, you know, been in this movement of repatriation for a long time. Uh, so what we have built is bu build something organically from 2006 to where we're taking people to Africa, and we're connecting them to the future of living and doing business. And now that we have our Black South Pan-African community, we can do this at the highest level now. Uh, me and Azibo communicate throughout the time frame, and along with the other people that we have in the country 
to where we can get anyone set up to travel on their private journey, see the land, connect with some good people, and also be clear if you want to be a part of the future of, uh, with us. Uh, one thing I would say about us versus others is we'll put the time in to create an organized structure to where, where we're operating as an organized, um, you know, organized operation to where when people are calling, emailing, communicating with us, we're able to you know, communicate back with them, meet them here, meet them there in Ghana, um, and organize things to where we can actually help you move to the country and get settled. And this is something that you know, we've done over a period of time where the more we do these things, the better. Uh, so that's what we're talking about as far as moving to Ghana and getting access to living and doing business. And the way you're going to learn these things is from people who have stand the test of time and people who are doing these things. It's not a whole lot of people that you can quote unquote connect to that can help you with this. But that's my business that I've built. And just want to be able to just let people know that when they're out there looking at land and things like that, you're going to have people telling you that uh, there's 5,000 acres of free land, this amount of free land, and you should join them and things like that. That's up to the individuals. We don't have anything that we have is free. Uh, last I remember from the chief, the attorney, the surveyor, the consultant, and all the people who have in payroll, security, maintenance people, everyone has to be paid. So the breakdown of the costs cover those things to where we can effectively operate to get it done. Uh, but at the same time, too, I do understand people may be interested in, in so-called free land, but that's not always as simple as that. So I tell everyone, make sure that they hear us out clearly, process what we have going on. Then anyone else that's offering them something else, compare it, not just compare numbers, but compare professionalism, compare aspects of availability. We have two offices, one in America and one in Ghana. And last I remember some of these people who are doing these things, there's no office set up. As you can see here, here in the background, this is a full-fledged office. I turn it around, you see the other parts of our, you know, of our office set up. And uh, this is a designated administrative place. And we eventually will build our office in Jahadzi that way and build the, the community and so on that way. But this is our start and our foundation. So what I always wanna do is do some screen sharing. I won't take long on the screen sharing, but just sharing the information for the record as far as uh, what we have available. And so start with, So I'll start with our website, uh, africafortheafricans.org. This website is built for all of our Africa tours and our investments, which is Black Star Pan-African Community. So we have not built a separate website for Black Star Pan-African Community, but these are the things uh, where we'll get there uh, soon. But for now, uh, we're just trying to get everything organized on our dedicated website. So once you get there, the first um, link you're going to see is Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. And it's gonna give you a long list of information for you to process that way you're clear. So the introduction, just go into introduction about how we got operations set up and, and who we're looking to market to. Then we have site map, land survey, GPS coordination. So you can get access to um, you know, you know, Google Docs to where you can see the 15 acres, the 60 acres, and also you can see the office and you basically see the 15 and the 60 acres in separate location, but the office is in the middle. Uh, so it just gives you a flow of this, you know, where this location is and it's also the uh, directions to the office. Uh, so th then the next thing is the land search uh, for the community. So the land search along with letters from uh, the chief showing land ownership. Uh, prime objective is telling everyone uh, our main focus on what we're looking to do, which is build a Pan-African community uh, that's completely self-sustainable. And we can build Black cooperative economics and, and do the next thing right here, which is build business opportunities. And then after that, uh, building and buying homes. Then people know that your home should be used as an investment uh, property. It's not something that you always have to live in. Uh, but at the same time, too, it's just uh, explaining to you that we're trying to create a flexible option for you to build your real estate in Ghana. Uh, membership rules, code of, code of conduct, membership application, uh, which you don't have to use this because I will send it to you in the email. Pictures and videos, which uh, you'll see um, the last three years of all of the pictures and videos from all of our visits, land clearing, uh, us meeting the chief, 
Uh, it's just a full detail of information. Uh, committees, this gives you a list of all the committees that we have, that uh, once we get more and more people to join in the committees, work together to do different aspects of the committees that will focus on helping us take the Black South Pan-African community to another level. Our bylaws, that's our general bylaws of the community. And our getting started, that gets right to the point to where it uh, break down the land costs and, and, and in both phase one and phase two, it also talks about the vision of phase three and it gets into uh, the cancellation and refund policy and things like that. So these are all relative information that I have in an email in three documents. First of all, the overview, which cover all of these files with the exception of the committees and the bylaws. And saying that, what I'll do is show you the actual email. And so this is a uh, long email, but the main thing is what you wanna do is show all documents. Now, the best thing I would tell anyone that received this is just to download all of the documents and take your time and go through it. It's basically us saying, hey, this is all of our information for our program and take your time, look through it uh, from the incorporation to the land surveys, to the site um, overview, sample documents, um, our incorporation here, uh, the future layout of the 60 acres, the chief um, sign stamp uh, document of land ownership, uh, land search. And then some of these things are also in PDF files. And the main thing I always tell everyone when they, once they read this email, just read through all of the documentation are provided here. The first thing it does is give you a link to the YouTube page, which has over 120 something videos over the last three years, from conference calls to presentations to us visiting the land, us talking about the land, us showing updates at our business office, us showing houses going up. So this all aspects of this, what you wanna know if you want, before you invest in the community. So phase one, uh, most of the plots are sold out. Um, uh, we, we have about, we don't have five anymore. We have about uh, three as of uh, yesterday. Uh, so anyone that's interested, they can, uh, I can always talk with you, give you a list of what's available and we get you going. And then after a while, only thing that we're gonna be having, we will have remaining is uh, the big bulk of 60 acre land in phase two, which we have over a hundred uh, plots for residential and over a hundred for commercial and other aspects. So the breakdown of what we have here, um, it will explain phase one entails 60 plots on 50 acres. The residential and commercial plots on both phase are 80 to 100 um, feet per lot, for a total of 8,000 square feet. And so we plan to use the 10 remaining plots for community center, business center, and security post, and that'll be in the front of the 15 acres. So that's what the site layout would explain. And then phase two will include 240 plots, 60 acres uh, for, for residential and business project. This will include 30 plots for farming, 120 for residential, 24 plots for apartments, condos, 32 for on-site commercial investment, four for community store, four for medical center, four for education slash training building, four for maintenance facility, and eight for the additional community and business center. Uh, so the, the layout of that is also on a sample um, 60 acre layout, uh, which is drawn and mark, mark, and it's not digitalized yet because we're looking at it to see if we need to make some adjustments before we take it to a digital version. And phase three, this is just a vision um, and we're scoping things out and negotiating and talking but it may take, you know, take a while, but uh, that vision connects us to the, the final part of what we're looking to do, which will evolve into a beach town and an industrial park. Uh, so we can have all aspects of this beautiful world, beautiful life in our own town, uh, which we'll be working with our own people there. And the only situation about the town, it's probably about 80% children. So uh, all of what we build and we have a generation of children will be able to learn and grow into building this incredible business slash uh, technology uh, you know, office, uh, community, town, and so on. Uh, so we have a great opportunity to bring in the right people to work with us. And we don't have a bunch of things in our way. Uh, we're dealing with uh, one main chief and it's not one of those big towns. We got a bunch of different chiefs and things like that. And no one knows who's in charge and no one knows who's running the show and no one knows who's the real land owner. 
these are things that we have solved from not going in the direction of like Cape Coast or other parts of Ghana, where it's just madness. Um, Sino Beraku, you can name a few different areas um, that with land drama, land problems. So this is a town that's not really on the map. So what we have done is put it on the map the last three years. So breakdown of costs, uh, $500 administrative costs, uh, $3,000 for the land costs, and uh, then survey and registration, $350 and $700. So people say that you're getting free land. What they would do, they, they avoid the $300 administrative costs and the $3,000 land costs. But if you don't pay administrative costs, who does the work? If you don't pay land costs, the people don't get their money for their land. And, you know, it's... It's a weird situation. So uh, we have explained in all of the breakdown of what our land project costs because this is not free land, it's land that we have to pay for. And it's also land that we have a complete administrative staff that has to be paid to get all the things done. So I just wanna be transparent with people because I'm getting frustrated with hearing about this 5,000 acres of land and 5,000 acres of land. And you know, me and my people have been telling people that it's not as simple as you, you think it is, but I don't wanna be involved in talking to people business. So uh, go do your research on everything else, just like we're giving everyone upfront information before they make a commitment. And once you make a commitment, uh, then we just work out payments and we have a few different options. And then these are the basic things, getting started, background check requirements and payment options. So these are things we can also always talk about. And then we give you access to all of the documents via link here. And then everything that's attached, all the important files, it tells you exactly what they are and tells you the file format. Cancellation and refund um, policy, since everything that we do in business has to have some kind of cancellation and refund policy. So these are the things that we want anyone that's interested to, to just say, say, let us know that you're interested. We send you the information, you go over it, and then we go over it with you, and then you make a commitment whether you want to get one of the plots in the first phase or the second phase. And then once you uh, commit, uh, then we can add you into our group page and connect you with our group community. And then that's how we keep updates also in the group community and also on the email list. Uh, this is the newsletter that we send. The newsletter always have the, uh, the Zoom link and any information that is relevant to the community. So I always tell anyone, once we send these out, it gives you the date. It has, for the most part, the same uh, topic and layout because these are things that we never go over all together at one time, but at the same time to send a newsletter, someone can take the newsletter, go to the details, it has the relative links in it to get all the additional information. And then once they read the email, all of that information is said to be clear to where now you can process your decision. And then uh, you can also ask anyone else that say they're doing land or any kind of business to send you all of their credentials, all their details, all of their history and information. And if they're not gonna do that, then you have to just start wondering why. Because if people are really serious about their business, they'll be organized. And I'm telling people this because I'm tired of seeing people lose money on land deals in Ghana, lose money in these kind of business. And, and I'm not saying everybody should join us, but we have had a track record of you know, executing and getting things done. But then when you look at the other situation, you run into trouble. These are my brothers right here. We're in this together. And it's just some of us right here. That's the chief in the Kente Clark, our attorney in the blue and white outfit, myself in the middle, the surveyor, which is a different surveyor uh, right by me, and then the uh, brother to the left, uh, Kwabina, and that's our consultant. And then we have another consultant and we have multiple people. And the reason why you do this is because when you're taking on a project like this, you have to have all aspects of the people that you trust with your life to look over these things and make sure everything is correct because you don't wanna be embarrassed a few months or a few years later uh, people may say something about you, but then if they say it, I tell people, prove it. Uh, so this is the way I recommend people do certain things. Spend the money, get your attorney, get your consultant, get people that you trust, and you and then move forward. And then work on it little by little. And understand that all of these process, whether it's getting your incorporation, the survey, your registration, it takes serious time. So the better you can have it organized and have a organized group to work on it, the better these things can get done. Uh, but the land process is completely different from other countries, especially for those of us living, living in America. It may not be the same process, but we make it simple and easy based on explaining these things. And we do it more in a community so we can watch out for each other. 
So these newsletters are set to where you can share it with some friends or family members and they can process the details. And then they have the link right here to join. And corporation is here, you can, so individuals could also look up some of these information in Ghana and say, are these people real about their business? Do they follow the necessary process? Is this community under litigation? Do they have issues? And you, you know, put my life on it. Anyone who got and do what they're doing, you're going to get no, 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 because we've done the legwork. And this is our office. Uh, it's coming up on one year since we have had it established. And eventually we'll build one on our property once we get the necessary things in place. But for now, to be actively involved and engaged, we have it uh, set to where it's an active office and we have people in and out working and the, the land is a, a short walk uh, up the street or, or across the street, I should say. And uh, more links, uh, this is our uh, Facebook. You know, we have the Facebook group page and we just post updates on there also. And uh, our YouTube link, which is on everything. Land survey, um, stamped, approved, signed, lands commission. A list of topics, uh, this us, uh, that we've just gone over over a period of time, um, including uh, today, gone over some of these details. Uh, that's a fix that, that's 3,550, sorry, it's 4,550. And then we also talk about uh, homeowners association and membership dues. So these are both on the newsletter and in the email. Uh, that way everyone is clear about what we're doing because uh, when it's time to maintain the land and do certain things and get certain projects done, uh, that's what we use that homeowners association membership dues for. And, and administration is completely something different. Let's deal with more legal, attorneys, uh, consultants, surveys, and things like that. Uh, this is the 60 acres. And the 60 acres uh, is set to where, I'm gonna show you the, the breakdown of it that I explained, but same thing, stamp and approve. Uh, so, and this is just a vision based on how it actually looks to just create a nice uh, residential and business district. And then, you know, we can also work with the chief to build a bigger industrial part uh, separately uh, because he has more land in that area. And this is the chief uh, letter. And this is just one additional documentation about land ownership. And then we have a few videos, business conference, um, citizenship conference, these are, a wonderful list of committees that we're gonna be really pushing. It's something that we, we built for more of the future. And you now we have some of, we have it established where we have the groups already in place and we're gonna be building more membership in these different groups. But the 10 groups cover just all aspects of life, of development, living, enjoying life and covering the things we need to cover. This is the couple who built the first house and this is our current surveyor. Uh, one of our group pitches with the chief and his family. And this is this uh, message in September 2019 when we were looking to find a way how to just build our future community. And uh, our brother Kwabina was doing the research as our consultant and was able to work with uh, one of our good brothers, Raymond Gomez. And from there, we just kind of work out this land deal and put the things in place. So it's just talking about a little bit of the history. That way people can see what went on during 2019 and how we've been able to progress since then. The only thing you'll see in there is that you know, the, some of the costs have gone up. And our wonderful presentations that we do in Ghana, um, Repatriation Investment Conference, and we do that before we actually go see the land. And one of our groups on the land that was just raw, it don't look like that no more. It's, you know, you see it with roads, whether it's dirt roads, and you see it with this, you know, being more manicured. Uh, the first house has been built. It's no longer looked like that. It's complete and it has a wall around it. Uh, me and my good brother that's uh, showing people raw land and how we're gonna take raw land to, to, to make it into developed land and build a real estate operation and help our brothers and sisters who are interested in living and doing business in Africa in an organic way to where we can take things to another level. More business conference. Uh, uh, so we have, we have just built the energy over a period of time. And these business conferences, they have legal teams and people from Lands Commission. So 
they're going to tell you the things that we're telling you also. But, you know, it's also for additional recording to let people know, hey, uh, there's a group there that's telling you how to do the right thing and how to avoid issues with land. So over the period of time, I'm still confused why people have so much issues with land because we've been talking about how to go about doing it with legal professionals and consultation teams. But honestly, a lot of times people don't use our service. And I tell people, you can call me and it don't cost you nothing to talk with me. And I may save your life because I have, you know, I have serious experience. I've been going to Ghana since 2006 nonstop. And I'm a networking person. So wherever I go, I'm meeting people, in, whether it's business owners or people who are living there and a common person who want to work with us to, to, to help you get settled or someone who, who, you know, who just have information that can help you in general. And if nothing else, I tell everyone, that's what we offer. Um, consultation and relocation planning service for $200 an hour. And it's something I'm good at working out. And I got my team in Ghana. Uh, so that's a country I can work it out. Other countries would be a little more tricky, but we you know we can work it out. But this is the country we still recommend it for you know, a, a movement because you can get a lot done in Ghana. Um, and I've gotten a lot done with just residency and you know, my US passport and visa there. Right, so these are some of our groups in the past. I don't have the Tanzania group up, which we just came back from a few days ago, but uh, groups after groups. So when you, you're doing this, people ask you how you learn this trial and error, going through the trials and tribulation and then just learning and learning and learning. Uh, there's no roadmap map or any book that was written to show you the divine guidelines of moving from America to Africa and living there successfully. There's people who attempt to write, write books, but it's more of a course you have to go through. And this is the course connecting to people like ourselves, whether you're dealing with our tours or you're just coming there straight to just check out the investments. And I always have links to all of our tours and for the things we do, but this is our social page that anyone can always just connect with. And these are all of the tour schedules that we have coming up. And then the YouTube page link for Black Star Community is 133 videos. And you can, these are some of the titles. And you scroll down, all you just seen is this updates and progress and us, you know, showing you what we're doing. So the short videos are when I was in Ghana a few months ago. So when I get back in December, we shoot some more updated videos and then we just keep it going. So it's a lot of information uh, to present and to keep sharing, but definitely just want everyone to know that uh, uh, if you're serious about what we're doing, this process information, let's talk and keep talking and then uh, let's get you connected. All right, so Baba Zebo, so just want to do that for the record. And uh, just want you to give, and you have to unmute yourself. I'm gonna open things up for you to give an update on all the things that we've been talking about. And when you finish, you and I can go back and forth and share some pictures of some of these updates. But I want you also to tell people about your journey. You know, if you could just take a good 10 minutes, talk about your journey of um, how you got connected to Ghana and how you got connected to Black Star and what your vision is there on the land and all of the people that you supervise and manage uh, to make our operation work there on the ground. It's probably a lot. Uh, but just do your best, and then whatever you miss, you know, me and you will go back to uh, for the record. Yeah, yeah. I, I started my journey when I was uh, a little kid, you know, it was about seven or eight, you know. Uh, I've, I've always been the type of person that, that um, didn't feel at home when I was in the U.S., and I've, 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 I've always felt like I should, be, I should be doing something else. And that something else is uh, fighting for my freedom, building, building for my freedom, being in a place and laying out a foundation for, for uh, to build a freedom for not only for myself, but for my children. And that's what that's why I'm so uh, I'm so adamant about the uh, the youth movement uh, because uh, you know it, 
when you look at history, you, you, you're saying that, I mean, Marcus, Marcus, Marcus Garvey was like about, like I, like I was saying in the last video that he lived about a hundred years ago. And um, he, he did not, let's be real about it. He, he, he did not accomplish his goal. And uh, there's a lot of, lot of people that, that Marcus Garvey did, uh, didn't even step foot in Africa. But then I, I see, uh, on the contrary, I see a lot of other uh, uh, things that he that he did, or he was he was on some kind of conference. He was at some kind of conference uh, on the continent. Um, but you know, I've I've been through a lot of uh, changes coming up as a kid and. Uh, you might say that I've been in touch with the ancestors for quite uh, quite a while. It's it's, it's more of a, a spiritual thing. It's it's not any one. It's not like a religion or anything like that. Or uh, but it's it's uh, it's like an overpowering. Uh, it's not even loud, but it's it's like like an overpowering voice saying that. Uh, I should be doing something. I should should be doing something great, or I should be doing something to get from under this oppressive condition that myself and my people are going under, you know, and, and not just take the uh, the uh, if you can't beat them, join them type of uh, position, you know, and just accept it. I, I have never been the type of person that accepted my uh, my oppression. Um, this is a this is a kind of a a thing where one has to have to give an assessment of of the person of of, of why are you living your life living on an, under an oppressive condition and not not even make any move towards doing something about it you know think about your kids you think about your your uh, your immediate uh people that brought you to the planet which is uh, your grandmothers grandfathers they did the best they could you know, one of the reasons why they they stayed close to religion is because it it kept them from it kept it kept their sanity. Basically, it kept them sane. Um, man, my my journey was. Uh, college when I went to college Wayne State you know they didn't have any any real courses on African art or anything which is quite obvious you know uh, you're dealing with uh, European westernized institutions they're not going to promote something that they are they are against so I, I when I was in college I, I, I took it I did independent study I studied African art I studied uh, African culture. I went to the library, listened to uh, uh, traditional African music. You know, um, it, it was a journey. It, it, it was the next. You know, it, uh, trying trying to free my spirit, trying to free from my. Uh, my phys the physical aspects, the economics uh, part of it, trying to trying to uh, figure out what, what what is this? Why why is why are we going through all of all of these different changes as as a people? Why 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 aren't we uh, advanced? And believe it or not, the same thing is happening here on 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 the continent. You know, it's the same thing is happening to black folks all over the planet. 
And I felt like it's, it's necessary for us to uh, uh, come together and start from scratch. You know, not, not even start from scratch. Our ancestors left us a legacy of wisdom. Wisdom and, and, and uh, but the wisdom is based on who eyes are we seeing this wisdom through? Are we seeing seeing it through uh, falsifications and uh, 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 ple ple plagiarized uh, concepts of wisdom, or are, are we looking in, into ourselves and pulling out the uh, wisdom that our ancestors left us? Um, uh, are we are we dealing with our DNA uh, in in terms of uh, we we are the first people on the planet. You know, that that in itself says a lot. That that says that says it all. Black folks are the first people on the planet. And what does that mean? That's that's really deep. That's really heavy. You know, it, it means that we are the mothers and fathers of all human beings on the planet. That means that we should be What's going on over there? Wait, the sound keep on happening. But uh, try to uh, tie everything into the reason why we're building a Black Star community, uh, as you're right on point about our struggles. Yeah, the, the, uh, uh, that it, it means that, that we, we are the leaders of, of this planet. That means that we are the true custodians of this planet. And uh, planet meaning land, okay, land. Without land, you can't get anything. You can't do anything. You can't, you can't even print money without land because you need the trees to grow the, uh, to make the paper from the wood to create uh, money. You need the metal from the ore from the ground to create coins. So, I mean, that, that, that is the, the road to journey to our freedom is, is land. And, and the reason why I got with uh, Bomani and the Black Star Pan-African community was uh, just for the fact that if, if you don't free the land, you can't free the people, you know. Uh, this, is, this is the whole crux of, of this whole movement, the whole Black Star Pan-African uh, community movement is to uh, acquire the land, not in the way that our oppressor did, but take control of the land and, 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 and use the resources to create a, a way of life for ourselves and not just copy off of uh, or what we deem as, uh, as advanced uh, or first world countries, which is the West. We have our own dichotomy. We have our own paradigm that we have yet to even tap into that's millions of years old. And this is what I mean by the wisdoms of our ancestors is that, you know, dealing with Black Star, we are fo we, we're following the will of our ancestors. Uh, you know, using using Marcus Garvey as an example of uh, what the uh, Black Star Pan African Community Economic Youth Movement is about. You know, Marcus Garvey was about economics. You know, he was about development and growth. Uh, you know. You know, where is our men of big affairs? Where, where is, where is our original? Right here in Africa, and uh, the, this is this is the foundation for African people building an in institutional structure that's that's able to uh, uh, deal with power in control of our own destiny as a people. Let me say that again. 
land is the basis of wealth, of black wealth. Africa is the richest country on the planet. It's the richest con continent on the planet. We, we're not a country yet. You know, it's, it's you know, we had to get over this Berlin conference thing first. But we are evolving and we are coming around uh, in terms of uh, building the necessary uh, infrastructure that's needed for us to build the type of empires uh, that is even slightly comparable to the empires that uh, kingdoms, the Mali kingdom, that our ancestors uh, uh, built. They built institutions and models for institutions that that are that Western institutions are based upon now. You know, but, but you let them say that, that, that it originated from them. Just like they say that the Bible uh, religions originated from them, but it's a lie. They've been telling lies ever since they've been out of the Caucasus Mountains, you know, the Asians. But uh, the land that we have at Black Star is a star. It's, it's a start simply because it, it gives us the opportunity to move in, in the area of development and growth. All we, all we need to do, all we need is a plot of land, build our home. Once you build your home, then you can go, you can branch out and integrate into the larger community. And, and uplift the, the rest of the community. Because believe you me, uh, African people, we are, we, we are far behind the rest of the world when it comes to technology, uh, when it comes to development. And uh, the uh, Black Star Pan-African community In that direction, we are moving in in that direction, and uh, it it might seem like it's sort of slow, but we we are Africa is literally waking up. Tell them, brother. Tell them. Yeah, and and uh, uh, the way the way things are going on this planet, the the, the direction that that our, our adversaries are taking the planet is, uh, is, to, is going in, in, in a direction of destruction. And whether you want to believe it or not, it's not a prophecy that Africa is the, is the only place of peace that the world is going to find to have that, that, that is going to be of of any have any people are not going to have have peace until they come to Africa, because it's going to be so much destruction and chaos in the rest of the world. Till it's like people people are going to uh, be looking for peace but not be able to find it, except on the mother continent. And I, I am so glad that I'm here. I, I really I I, I feel that peace uh i i joined uh i've been on um for my like about eight about eight nine years almost almost 10 years yeah, we're, I've been, been for a long time we've been talking about this for a decade brother for almost a decade yeah that's right and, and we're finally here <laughs> I finally got there and it, 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 I, we need more help we're moving at a snail's pace, but we're moving. We're starting in a place that our ancestors want us to start, which is on the mother continent. We're starting in a place and we have land, but we are starting. You have to, the first step to a thousand miles, the first, first direction to a thousand miles is the first step, you know. You know, we're moving towards 
uh, 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 fighting for our freedom. We, we're moving towards uh, building the type of institutions that Black people need in order to take our right positions uh, on this planet as custodians of the planet. And we, we, we have a with the land. In fact, we represent the land and we represent nature. We represent not only Africa, but we represent the entire planet Earth itself, period. You know, and I'm not going to be arrogant about it. I'm not going to, I'm going to be humble about it, you know, and if, whether you want to know the truth or not, I'm going to tell you the truth. We are literally, historically, and archaeologically, your so-called God's chosen people. How, how, how did that come to be? It came to be because we are what? The first people on the planet. Simple as that. And uh, what we're doing, what we're doing at Black Star, we understand this. We understand the, the need to for African people to be re-educated. We understand that we need direction. We need to be pointed back in the direction of the Sankofa, meaning going back to the wisdom of our ancestors and bringing that wisdom to the present so that we can teach our children in the future. This time we're getting it right. And we have to get it right because uh, as far as, as what my ancestors are saying that uh, no more, no more uh, playing around, no more uh, uh, moving in a direction uh, and, and being being come from under the spell of the uh, westernized uh, uh, Gentiles, Europeans, come from under that spell so that we can be about the task of building um, an empire for our children, laying down the, the groundwork, the foundation for generations to come to follow. Let's get it right this time. And then we have the uh, Black Star Pan-African community working day and night. In fact, you know, I, I get up every morning, five o'clock. I have a five o'clock wake up every morning. Every morning I have an agenda, like, uh, you know, going out, uh, dealing with the growth, the overgrowth, like uh, here in, in uh, Ghana, uh, especially in Jahazi, this is a farming community. But uh, the overgrowth, when it rains, it, it really pours, it really pours. I think you witnessed that the last time I was on uh, a live. You know, hey, well, what, we, what, what's that I, ding sound? What's that ding sound? It keep on happening. Is there something going on in the house? Ding. Uh, no. There's oh, something yeah. That yeah, that was that was a uh, that was a notification on my phone. Yeah, can you turn it off? It's disturbing the your your flow when you're talking. Like I got okay. all my stuff turned off. Okay. Do, do the best you can do, and um, yeah, and then I just I'll wrap up, um, especially about the last set of things that's been going on on the land, and the reason why you know we literally acquire this land uh, again, um, which is every time I talk about things, I'm explaining to people, these are the reasons why we acquired the land is because we need to have land to be able to build what we need to build. And uh, in America, basically other people have came past us and you know take that situation to where now they, they're building everything up and building everything that we need and we're just cus customers and consumers. So that's why I want everyone to know that the energy right. that we're building, you know, is, is in ownership. And, you know, we go from the struggles in America to realize, hey, what if we could have been doing this more so in America? And then we can still do this in America. But what we have there in Ghana is, is basically salvation. 
you know, and when you build it, you'll be able to have the, the freedom that you really need and desire. That's right, brother. That's right. Yeah. And while you're, while you're talking, I'm going to pull up the screen share so we can go through some of the updates on the, uh, the land. But uh, continue. Yeah, we, what was on my agenda was to, uh, is to, is to get the, uh, the, the overgrowth down. We had to literally pay people to chop the overgrowth down because it rains so bad. It rains so much till it's just like uh, the, the average plant they they grow like a quarter of an inch every day it's like you got you got grass that's taller than a house they don't call it the bush for nothing you know and it, then uh, to, to stay on topic uh you know uh what we what we what, what we're doing is replacing the uh we're replacing the uh well, this picture, this, this picture is showing a survey. So with the survey that I'm telling people, these are the guys that's doing the marking. And then I'll just, and that's uh, our surveyor and his assistant. Right. So when you get that paperwork, it's a precise paperwork that shows your land coordination. So that's the importance of the survey, family. And... And then now we have another we have another building. This is something completely different. Now exp explain what this is and what you're looking to do in this project because there's no business district in Jahadzi at this moment, and you are working on one. Yeah, there there is no business di district, and uh, I I think it's going to start with the first restaurant, and uh, we we have the first restaurant in Jahazi. We're building the first. Well, not we're building. I'm renting a space. And uh, uh, we, we, what we want to do is uh, set up a, a website for uh, uh, so that people can can uh, order in and it, it can be delivered to people in the local area. I guess it's not only it, it, the, uh, the restaurant is called uh, uh, Azibo's Cuisine, which is going to feature uh, jerk chicken sandwiches, jollof rice, chicken uh, cuisine. It's going to be on the menu, Jamaican or, or um, uh, Ghanaian. And next to that is going to be an ice cream parlor, which is uh, our, our youth movement, economic youth movement, uh, uh, have an idea of creating businesses so that so that they can hire individuals from their own community, train and hire them to work in the businesses that they open up. So this is the primary reason why we call it uh, the best pack economic youth movement because it's trained by people, uh, retirees, people that come that move here and have their home built. Uh, on, on the uh, site, development site, Black Star Community Development Site. After they have their house built, then they move, they, uh, they uh, train people on different areas, in different areas where they want to start a business in. And we have a member that wanted to start an ice cream company, that wanted to start an ice cream factory. So uh, we use that idea as a way to uh, uh, further our program uh, in terms of creating jobs for uh, the area, for Jahazi and, and for the most part uh, going farther farther down uh, in, in a radius area, in a radius throughout the whole, con whole country of Ghana and uh, possibly throughout the whole continent of Africa itself. Marcus Garvey's spirit is uh is alive and well, you know. You know, um, this is uh these are shots here from uh, from the Black Star. This is some of the foliage that we we had to chop down. We had to chop. 
Uh, we we got it down to to where you can you can at least see the buildings and see people passing by and stuff like that. But it's going back fast, so I got to get some people over there uh, tomorrow morning. To, yeah, like, uh, like this is fine right here. This is fine. It's just, when we get there, we just want to make sure everything is smooth for where people can walk. So this is a good part of where it's showing how nice and smooth the land is. Uh, family, when you're looking at it, these are the old pillars. Any pillars that's been damaged, and you ask me about why they were damaged, they're damaged because when you have bulldozers going across the land, and then you, then people are not driving as they should to clear the land correctly. So now we realize that it's best to do this with machetes, and then bulldozers can do something else, but not near the pillars. So all of these pillars, like these that are broken, you're going to see the replacements of them little by little as we go through these photos. This is a nice, one of your, one of your uh, nice photos because this is a great aspect of the, uh, the youth movement and the empowerment of our children, talking about Pan-Africanism and uh, Marcus Garvey. So I appreciate you being there, laying out the public relations. Is and I'm telling people is not we're not we're not uh, we're not missionaries, you know. But uh, you know, but uh, Garvey is like the father of our movement, and and it's. You know, it's how we got here, and so we just educate the people about pan Africanism, um, unlike missionaries and educate about religion. Right, exactly. All right, so let me skip to some more. All right, let me skip again. All right, Azibo, I got you unmuted because um, we have a little feedback when I talk, but the, I think that's clear. So these are some of the, the pillars that are still there. And so some of, and the ones that are worn out, that's what we've been doing is fixing them. You've been taking these pictures so you know where all of these are. See, broken pillars. So now we're gonna get to the replacements of what we've been doing. Uh, this is the community where our office is. Um, it's, and it's that is even on the development. So if you need a temporary place to stay to live for a year, or up to a year, we can get one of these units rented for you, and then you can go across the street and build on your land. And that's the the setup that we have been working on, to where we can help people do it more effectively. All right now, this is back on the land. Um, this um, all, all since we have homes going up, it's always. Um, main things being developed so we're showing you like live action of just how the land is with pillars on the floor uh building materials and this is around the area animals uh that community uh that our office is in and then uh the red black and green flag in our office and then people know that this is what we're about you know we're about uh, Black Power Nation building in a way to bring a self-sufficient world to our children where they can be ent enterprising and not just have to look for working for all other nations of people in factories and corporate buildings. And these are a list of pillars that we have gotten. So with these pillars, we four point your land and, um, and put the numbers on it, uh, lay out where the roads is. And then we also have a digital format of it to where if we're showing someone the land, we can use the, the land map and also the markers. And then that's what your builders also will use along with your survey to start building your house around your perimeter. So the one thing you can see as Zebo when you look at this is it's green, right? And that's what you want. You want somewhere that's green and see how beautiful that dirt look. Uh, you know, sun rising. Uh, we do have a few videos, but, uh, and then if you're looking at the land construction site, you know, these are the things you're going to see. So, uh, which we can just show you a big overview of everything that's going on, but just using the pictures to show you just updates of just work, consistent work being going, consistent work going on. Oops, wrong thing.
All right, and this is a layout right here. Uh, so it's a beautiful land layout, but it is it's organized as an incredible community. The business center is actually a technology and business community, business uh, center and community center. You know, we can also add our medical and other things in those two big buildings. So the goal is to make them two big buildings, two floor, and then have a uh, you know the rooftop connection that goes across. So I got some great ideas to make that work. And you know, you have a nice little road road map to just get around from your home so where everybody have a nice amount of space. All right, so I appreciate your sister joining us right here. That's cool. <laughs> All right, so Zeebo, I'm looking to get to the pictures with some more of the, the pillars as you and a few other people are working on. Some reason some of your pictures is not, all right. All right, I found a way to get some of your pictures to load. They weren't loaded before, unfortunately. All right, cool. So since I got this, let me just uh, load a few of these. All right, so that's, um, so family, those same pillars that we have, you know, this one, as you can see, is brand new. It's being replaced and put together. So from the weeding to the setting up of pillars, these are the things that we do as far as this hardcore land development. And we're learning the whole process. Uh, and as time go along, we become experts at these. You already seen the 50, the 15 acre layout of the community. You know, you can look at even other modern subdivision. They have, you know, maybe have a little lease and office space, but we're incorporating it in the setup to where you have a big community and business center. And you're talking about from classes to connecting with the orphanage to connecting with the town and, you know, from people training, from people working in the technology area. It's, this is the foundation of it. So I'm always telling people like, like, if we want an incredible vision, we have to just go build it. And that's what we did with Black Star Pan-African Community. And we did it, you know, we did it in an organized way where we put our minds together. And we all decided this is what we want to do as a group of people. Let me see if I can go back a little bit since these pictures have loaded now. All right, now I can get to it. All right, so from Broken, See man working on the wall. All right, so. All right, so I'll show you some more of those and also uh, visitors we have this. You know, that's a beautiful picture right there. Um, then we have visitor on the land. So we're gonna build that office uh, Zebo, to where it's a more of a social place. We have more in place, more things set up. So let's tell them people be ready to see the future of what we're building. It's it's something special, and it's because we have had dedicated people that we've been working with that's been with us for the last few years, and they understand that it takes going through the trials and tribulations, and it takes working together to figure this thing out. But the the Fact of it is we're one of few you know, Pan-African communities uh, from the African diaspora that's there in our continent. Ghana should have already have about 10, 20 of them already. But I'm telling family, if this was easy, everybody else would have pulled it off. You have had, a lot of people came and gave it their best effort. You know, me and Azibo just got a different, um, you know, a different, you know, we, we, have a, we run a different tactical game plan. Um, I, 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 uh, based on how we do things. Now we, we work both angles from America to Ghana. And while he's over there getting a bunch of things done, I'm over here doing a bunch of things done. And then while we're doing that, we have a whole administrative staff of people We're from the chief, the attorney, uh, or the attorneys, uh, the, the consultants and other people, whether they're working up at the Lands Commission, 
or they're working on legal documents. Uh, so what you see is, is incredible just pulling off. Um, I tell people don't judge us based on a few houses being put up because those houses, you know, those houses are, are the progress, but at the same time, you have to build that foundation. Let me meet you. At the same time too, that is the foundation of going from hardcore raw land development where you just go from a jungle to go from, to where you have to make sure you build the paperwork from there on and build the layout, build the roads, build the digital maps, uh, get those things coordinated. So it's a whole energy of us, you know? And we have proven to people that this can be done, but the way we have approached it in the past, we're trying to go, and work down some chief about free land is not appropriate. Uh, it's not gonna work. We've seen too many disasters in that. Fiancra is a great disaster. Garvey Town, I know that land wasn't free and I know they paid some aspect of money, but another disaster. Then you have a few more that I currently don't wanna call their names, disaster. Um, so we're not all the same in this. So we're telling people when you see a few houses, if you're gonna judge, judge beyond us the houses, judge the, the setup, judge the fact that uh, you know, we're not out there with bad publicity and things like that. And there's no one can can verify or say that uh, what we're doing is illegal, it's against anything, or it's, you know, any kind of situation. So that's what we're doing and showing and proving. Um, and that's how we're able to just do what we're doing because you do the things the righteous way, you don't take shortcuts, you make sure you take care of your people there in Africa. And, uh, I know, we're, you know, we feel a way about being stolen, but we can't say, hey, give me this free land. And, but it's like, what do their family have? So if they do agree to give you that free land, their family, not all of the family members are gonna ever agree to that. So some of them may take it their own way because it's family land. So all of them have some level of entitlement to it or, you know, or things like that. And I don't know all of this stuff all work out, but all I know is the way we have survived in this is taking care of the people that we are building with in Ghana and working together with them and being respectful as a people. Uh, my brother Zebo will tell you, he has a great relationship with our chief and great relationship with the school, the orphanage, and all of the children in the community. You know, because we're always, we're there showing good love and energy. And we don't look down on our people as, you know, as we're coming to save you or we're better than you. And, uh, and we're coming with an energy of that, you know, that our children in Africa are the future. And we want to be a part of contributing to where they, can be ready and people like myself straight technology and business that's all i'm teaching that's all i'm evolving i'm wanting my our children to compete with the likes of everybody else now i was in tanzania and it was like i just saw the rise of the indians and they've been here for generations some of them over 100 years they have made a name for themselves and they've established themselves you know what i mean and i'm telling people we don't have to do the same move that they make you know we have a a, a real relationship with our people in africa we're divided and conquered and separated so our reconnection is something special then, but if we're gonna do it, do it at a level where we enterprise in. And so this is us enterprising. Uh, we have wonderful families of people who have passed through. I uh, don't wanna show too much of these pictures too long because you know, it's our guests and we're just showing real people at the same time. And you, you may look at this and say, you know, that's a chief and why is the building look like it's still developing? You know, these are the things that, uh, you know, we deal with. This is not one of the fancy rich towns. Um, and just because you're a chief don't mean that you're fancy and rich. But at the same time too, uh, is, you know, we're dealing with a well-educated uh, chief that's literally this about people. And I've been knowing him for you know, a few years and I'm one of the people that's a good judge of character because I, I spend time building relationship with people over a long period of time because over a long period of time, that's how you're gonna really know who's who. Because you know, the basic, you know, they're gonna either, everything that you, you talk to them about, they're gonna either impress you because they were about that business and they follow through or you're gonna be like, yo, this person, all they did was just talk a good game and never delivered. And so me and I'm on the same path to where whatever we say we're gonna do, we're doing it and you know, we're working on the best interest, interest for our brothers and sisters. And you know, as these representatives, as people there, and I'm representing my brothers and sisters from the diaspora, and together we're representing our, our, all together our Black African people.
Yes, brother. So you got everybody uh, uh, ready for painting the pillars, uh, Aziba. That's beautiful. I had to meet you because it's a feedback, but uh, I'll meet you in a second. So good pictures, brother. Um, um, just going to jump to a few more of them. And then we come to the man himself, the artist. I see a whole bunch of underground operation. So Zebo, good job, man. That looks beautiful. Uh, so um, it's going to look real nice, family, when we get to the land. You're going to see all the new markings. I remember the first time the land was set up. It was so incredible with all of the markings and the layout. And there you go. So there you go, brother. So you and, you and the sister did both of these. Let me just unmute you. Yeah, yeah, we did both. We, we, we both, she did the red and I did the lettery. Way to go, man. I appreciate you supervising and uh, training our children. I see you painted, uh, <laughs> you painted it from the first picture. So I tell people, this is, this is just a little start and you have to start somewhere. That's what we're doing. Yeah, that's, that's my business that I'm getting ready to open up. And there, there you go, man, that's your survey right there. It's gotta get one more stamp on there. So this is from the office. This was, you know, so just letting people know these are how the surveys look. We'll give you a nice clean scan copy with you know, all of the, the, the final approval and things like that. And they give you the full layout of your land. So these are some, you know, this is us learning these things from the ground up because I didn't know nothing about surveys. I used to see people with those machines all over the county. And then until I started getting into this business again, I started learning about surveying and these things. So it's incredible the things that we learn. And here is the bus right here that we talk about uh, that we're working with another group uh, so they can bring in a uh, certain uh, medical facility uh, and also bringing this, some of the assistance that we're looking for, which is to work with our children there and also teach them certain trades and us just working together from America to Africa. And this is the bigger one right here. Incredible. Trying to build that pipeline, that pipeline which I was talking about. There you go. So screen sharing stop. And let me see, brother Nekruma. I'm gonna mute everyone because it's a feedback. Aziba is usually coming from your line. Nekruma, I'm trying to get you to unmute. And Africa, I'm trying to get you to unmute. And also, Darren, I want to know if you have any questions or just if anyone have any questions in general. Um, well, me and Azebo went over about an hour plus of uh, presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nakuma, that's good. Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, greetings, my brother. Welcome to the conference call. And uh, thank you for joining this. Uh, Wanted you just to give some, you know, share some feedback of just what you just saw with the land and you see us been working together hard to get this thing done through all trials and tribulations. And we're letting, know, letting people know that, hey, we're dedicated to this. Um, and anything that uh, you have to work for and fight for, you're gonna go through some trials and tribulations. And at the end of the day, what you wanna see is where we are, where we're progressing. And um, you know, just wanna see how you feel about some of those highlights that we have shown with different people visiting our land, and us maintaining the land and us finalizing paperwork and things like that. Yes, but I see progression, man, and that's what you gotta keep doing, you know? Hopefully more people come in and understand what you're doing and have the, the positive vibes and whatever it takes, man, to get it done. Like I said to you before, you know, when once I get on the land, then I can know, I can see, I know what I wanna do and how I wanna contribute 
to what's going on over there because I know this must work, man. Because I understand I'm watching YouTube and I see certain people I listen to. I can see different people that does not look like us coming on the continent, man, and they taking over. Well, it looks like they taking over, but they can't take over because I heard it's 1.4 billion people on the on the continent. That's a lot. That's a lot of people, you know. And if we can get the mindset to change, not just the people on the continent, but the black people outside of the continent, and recognize that we are a powerful people. I was listening, you know, my brother told a Muslim dude, and um, I can't remember his name, but this was his statement. He said the black race is like the black race is like uh, seven seven feet tall and drowning in four feet of water. All we have to do is stand up, you know, and that that statement right there make a lot of sense to to I and I, you know, and that's what we're not doing. We still it's happening slowly, but a lot of us is not emancipating our minds from mental slavery. Like I told you before, I work as a slave. I didn't recognize it because I was trained. That's what I supposed to do: work, pay bills. And by the time I recognize it, man, I retire. I was fifty six when I retired, you know. And I never want to go back to that. And I recognize my freedom is there. And what you're doing, man, is a contribution towards that. And for me to partake in that, to make it happen, not just me, but, you know, as many of us as possible. You know, we have to recognize that we are, power. we're not weak. We are powerful people once we come together, man. And the freedom for us is in unity. I don't care where you come from. I listen to a brother named Tyree Lashie. And um, I'm calling his name out. I don't, I don't disagree with what the brother doing. The brother said he's American, he's not African. And my statement towards what he said right there, I'm not disagreeing with what he's saying, that's his feeling. But what I'm saying is no matter where we come from, like Peter Touch said, we are African as long as we black. And that's what it's gonna take for us to prioritize ourselves as African, no matter where we come from. And that's the, the that's the, the step on the stride we're gonna have to take to be free from these people. We are free, but we don't know. We don't know, we are free. Once the mind is clear, you know, like um, Stephen B, the brother from, the, from, um, from um, South Africa said, the greatest weapon of the oppressors is the minds of the oppressed. And they still control our mind through religion. And I don't know if anybody on the set is a uh, religious people, but that's how they, they control our mind and control us wherever we wherever we are on this planet, man. They come in as missionary and we tend to lose it, you know, after they're um, um, interfering in the way we, we were living and what, and, you know, what we were building and we can do it again. I know not, not can, we will do it again. I'm using the wrong language when I say we can. We will do it again. I believe that. You know, I was talking to a person and this person sent me a message and the message stated like um, Africans, um, the leaders of Africa, even the religious leader would sell their people out to the highest bidder. I saw that when I was there in Africa, I saw that. And I believe that statement and we have to get away from that. So, you know, Bridgen, I'm not, um, I'm not gonna um, leave what you're doing. I'm just not there on the continent yet. Yet I'm still in the States, you know? So I believe in what you're doing, brother. I believe in what you're doing. I truly believe in what you're doing, you know? So basically that's what I wanna say, you know? And um, um, like I said, you know, I see progress in what you're doing, what the Zebo is doing there on the continent, working with the youths. And that's a, another thing we have to recognize the youths are, are our greatest resource our greatest resource and we have to right now while they're young guide them protect them uh, and lead them in the right way man as they become adults man we kind of slowly get rid of uh this colonized mentality that they have within them because i myself grew up in jamaica i was colonized too and i come to the united states and I, it was here too as well you know like um i was talking to my son you know my son have a master degree and i asked him how many black books did you read from while you were going from to school? And he tried to say three, but I know it was none. <laughs> because they control, they control economics, 
they control um, um, what you learn in school. You look up to them and you think everything on the planet, they invented it, you know, which is a lie, but basically they stole everything. You know, when you go back and you get into your history, you know, like our ancestors said, we shall know, know ourselves through our history. And once you know your history, you see that we are a powerful race of people. And I know that um, um, we're gonna get away from that mentality and step into ourselves. It's happening slow, but it's happening. And I'm glad I'm 65 now and I'm seeing it happening. You know, I'm seeing it happening. I, you know, there's a couple of brothers I met. One is about 25. The other one told me he's 47 at the gym. Couple of brothers I met on the gym, man, and they well informed. They well, well informed, you know, and I'm glad to see that, you know. But um, I live in Arizona and most of the brothers I met at the gym, they have white wives and, <laughs> you know, so you not you know they're not a hundred percent. They can't be a hundred percent Pan African, you know. So anyway, I don't deal with those brothers like that anymore. I used to until one of them let me know, hey man, I'm American. This is where I live because I was getting seriously into the history. But anyway, my brother, like I said, man, what you're doing over there in Gyatse is beautiful, and I want to see it um, succeed. I know it will succeed. I shouldn't, you know, I don't want to keep using the wrong word and send out the wrong energy towards um, what you're doing over there. You know, I got to keep it positive and to keep it positive is to keep saying the positive thing that it will, it will happen as um, long as we stay together and grow. And when I say grow, I'm talking about more people come in and join in and bring, you know, whatever they can bring, you know, whether it's a uh, resource or skills or whatever just come on and let's build you know let's build so anyway my brother that's all i want to say you know so i'm gonna let you have somebody else uh you know speak on what's going on and i'll just listen all right i appreciate uh nikuma appreciate your dedication your support and it's our brothers like yourself and uh you know and a few of our other brothers and sisters that make this work because it's a long-term vision and you, you know, you need the grassroots people dedicated to getting this done. I know a lot of other people will come um, once we have a whole lot more done, but at the same time too, in order for us to start, we need pioneers. So appreciate you being a pioneer and appreciate you being a supporter brother. And I do understand once you, people, more of us get on the ground, we can do more. Same thing I feel myself, uh, I'm ready to, you know, all of my technical and business stuff is here that I wanna get over to, you know, because the whole town is children. Uh, so, you know, and then most of us have, you know, young children, nieces and nephews. So uh, we have a, a next generation is privileged for what we're going to be able to build. So, um, you know, family uh, that's listening, you know, we need, if you're like our brother Nkrumah and others, join with us and let's do this together. Um, but my bro brother, uh, Darren, um, Darren, uh, you're, still, you're still unmuted. Um. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, Appreciate you joining the call. And um, sometimes I'm not sure where people are looking at, especially when they join us and they probably see a history of all the things that we're working on, building on and things like that. So um, we just look at it as just a next day because we just, we're on this incline. So um, I'm not sure where you see from your perspective of how we're doing in this community and the pace that we're making. Oh no, we spoke early and I said that uh, I been um, looking at your channel and other content creators channels for some time and yeah that was kind of my reluctance if I ever did any purchase in, in Ghana really wanted to be in a community setting people that have already you know vetted some of the channels that they're working with because you see some of the, the horror stories I mean I've been watching like I said earlier some of the stuff that went on in, in the Gambia with Blacksit and uh, you know that whole debacle so yeah, I think uh, even like I said, I'm part of the uh, membership within uh, ADDI. And although they've made some progress, they haven't done anything yet in terms of uh, residential. So I know um, they've done something in Zimbabwe in terms of offices, and I think they have something in Ghana. So in terms of where you're at right now, you're, you're definitely um, way ahead of um, where they are. But my intent is to invest in, in multiple areas. I mean, that's the ultimate goal to practice group economics, get together with like-minded people and just build. And I think this is the blueprint. Some of the things that you're actually doing now and some of the things of, you know, friends and family we've talked about for years, just like uh, you and Azebo. 
Um, but we're, we're past the talking say, so we have these blueprints right now. And this is um, critical in this stage uh, of where we are right now in, in America and, and globally in terms of Africa. And you see the leadership changing. It's like leadership like 2.0 in terms of Paul Kagame, what the uh, president of Ghana is doing, um, some of the progress that Ethiopia is making, some of the projects that I'm looking at that they're doing online. You see the convergence even in America with uh, some of the other financial literacy um, groups that have uh, sprung up. I uh, think, I don't know if you've ever heard of EYL, the two guys in um, New York that pretty much have the, the number one podcast in terms of financial literacy, Wall Street Trapper, you know, um, Ian from the, um, the EYL group. So we're converging, I guess this is kind of a different period of time right now, the convergence of financial literacy. It got so big to the point where they even had an event in London and people from all over London and outside of London went to this uh, event in, in, uh, in London. I think it was where the, uh, the Beatles actually uh, played, which is rare. They've done an event actually in um, the Apollo in New York in Madison Square Garden. So we're, we're, we're living in an interesting time right now. So yeah, this is, this is the blueprint to, to get together, practice group economics and build. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, definitely appreciate your energy and your input. And uh, and a good thing is you have seen, you have seen the test of time. You have seen from years ago to now, and you've seen who's still around, and who's still doing certain things. And that's what I always tell people about us, uh, whether it's the Ebola, the financial crisis, or whether it's uh, this COVID nineteen. You know, the ancestors are with us on what we're building now because it's divine, and we've built it organically. Uh, we didn't just jump into a game and just started doing certain things. Um, and, you know, so we appreciate all the people who understand these things. And together, we're going to build this to another level because it's needed. And I just, you know, just came back from Tanzania, man, one of my best journeys ever. Um, uh, the logistics of it is, you, you know, I tell people, don't try this at home. Uh, this is not amateur hour. You have to be able to lay these things out. But while I was there, I enjoyed this incredible journey from Arusha, to Zanzibar Island, to Dar es Salaam. You know, what I saw was, you know, a high influx of um, Indian business people uh, running, managing, owning, and just doing incredible business. I was, oh, you know, I'm always impressed. Um, I tell people it's not, I'm not you know, sitting, sitting down and I'm fascinated by all these other nations. But, you know, when I look at the history of nations and I see where they're at and I see, you know, you know what they've been able to build for themselves. You know, even you know, growing up in Jamaica, you know, you you see see some of the same things. So what I'm always telling my brothers and sisters is that, you know, my envy of this situation is only for one purpose, to say, hey, these people have been oppressed people, even though they may not been in our same situations, they figure things out amongst themselves. And I'm talking about the different Asian nations that have progressed uh, since uh, the the late uh, 1900s to now. And this is the same thing that we're just looking to do. And, you know, Marcus Garvey was on that same level. And, you know, other people seem to have used some of his philosophies and his great, uh, his great vision and have built, you know, nations for themselves. And it's the same thing that we're looking to do. And we're telling people that all this individual movements in countries like Ghana, you would not get in no place with it. There's nothing wrong with us building a community. The communities that we build is going to enrich and connect our people. And don't feel a way because some people are discouraging you say, hey, when you go to Africa, keep away from African-Americans and keep away from this set of people and that set of people. These things are just complete nonsense. You have to stick together. I have many stories of, I can tell people about from, from, from you know, fatal situations that happened. If, and it, would, it could have been prevented if you have people that around you that had your back and not just more people that were strangers. You can have a combination of people around you. And that's what I've been able to do and work. So I'm not telling people that, or just follow us and everything, but we're saying, hey, switch up your game plan and and you know update it to the modern day era of what we're dealing with, and uh, you know and follow suit. So with that, uh, appreciate you, Darren um, and Nikruma, and let me just see if um, brother you or Africa, if you're open to sharing, because I'm looking to let our people know about the moves that they need to be open to making uh, to make be successful in Africa. So Africa and you, whichever one of you guys get unmuted first.
All right, so until one of you uh, open up, um, Aziba, I know it's late for you. Let me know if you have anything to share before you close or, or anything you'd like to share. I got your camera off um, in case you trying to do something. All right, so Nakuma, let me mute you and Darren, let me mute you. All right. Once again, you in uh, Africa, uh, just click on the top right to unmute yourself. All right, so until they unmute themselves, anybody have any questions and when anybody wanna talk about anything else, let me know. Uh, we've covered documentation and updates and uh, this general conversation of this movement to Africa and connecting with the right energy. So I, I know you heard about the, uh, the African countries that Dubai uh, restricted from visiting their uh, uh, Emirates uh, place. Uh, go ahead and enlighten us and make sure you can explain it clearly. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't actually read the article myself, but me and his colleagues talked about it. and. Uh, saying that, uh, you know, that uh, Dubai didn't want over it's about over 14 African countries to visit Dubai. Now, as far as the reason, I don't know the reason, but you know, that's, that's sort of like an embarrassment right there. As well. <laughs> it is an embarrassment. And um, let, let you and I talk, you know, since we're great, um, tactical people, let's talk about some solutions. But yeah, I'm familiar with the article and uh, me and my uh, brother, Carla Genesis and me and one or two other people have talked about these things recordedly uh, in one of our, in some of our videos. But uh, the main thing is um, as long as we don't create the opportunities on our African continent, our people are gonna do all kind of crazy stuff uh, to go other places. And when we go other places, uh, some of the rules and the way certain countries operate it's, it's no nonsense, you know, like Singapore, just be careful what you, you know, you do there because you may end up uh, you know, in jail for 20 years for doing something that you think is no big deal. Uh, the same thing with, um, like I've been to Singapore, Malaysia, um, Japan and Korea, it's just different uh, countries where these things happen. So some of our people that, you know, get some of these visas sometimes, unfortunately, embarrass the rest of us. Like example, like, you know, um, there's probably, there's a lot of you know, Nigerians there that's doing their business, trying to make a living and do it the honest and the right way. But then you have other people that, you know, in the underworld that's gonna do something different. So in these countries, once they see a consistent group of people, you know, and the names start popping up in different countries, because these are similar situations I've heard in other countries. So one thing we're gonna have to figure out is, um, is to create that uh, economic opportunity for our children and our people in Africa, where you know where more people can earn a decent, honest living, and they can reinvest that money back into their own country, and build the things that we need. You know, because the continent has every, you know. Once we build what we need in the continent, it's, it'll be one of the most incredible, self-sufficient uh, continent in, in the world. Uh, so we just have to get there. Uh, so. Uh, those embarrassments, I'm hoping that it wakes people up to say, hey, you know, if, the, if people don't want us in their country, regardless of whatever the situation, I need to focus on what I can do in my own nations, in my own country, and my own places where my people are. So that's what we're doing in, in, our, in the on African continent. We're like, okay, uh, if America is going to treat us this way and deny us certain things or lack of opportunities for being, you know, to build in like what we do and building communities and towns and things for ourselves, then hey, Let's make a move on the African continent. Uh, so all of the solutions, what we need to do as a people is within, within us. I um, uh, understand at one point it was a great opportunity to leave where you are and go abroad, but even America is getting tough to where you come here, it's, you just may end up in a worse situation. Uh, so not saying that people shouldn't take advantage of opportunities for international travel and visit, but uh, if, if we're gonna do it, we have to do it on a nation building level to where we have to use some of these resources here in America to build what we need to build in Africa. That way we have everything that we need eventually because eventually other nations can easily do that. Say, so, okay, all you folks from Ghana, Jamaica, Nigeria, uh, I don't want any of you in my country working. You can come and visit and spend your money 
and things like that, but I don't want any of you working. So we're not gonna give any of you a work permit. And yeah, we can sit around and cry racism and cry, oh, oh, this is how they do us and everybody's against us. I mean, no one is gonna care. No one is gonna care about if you feel like you're ra being racially discriminated against or whatever the situation is. Uh, it's, and it's something that we're eventually gonna have to deal with. So the solution is building our own ecosystem and building our own world of where we create our own opportunities and we just progress from there. Or we create a, an incredible pipeline of serious people from Africa to whatever country that we're trying to do things with. That way we don't, we're not around a bunch of other people that's gonna mess up certain opportunities. So we can take it different ways, but anybody else wanna chime in on this or you know, speak on it? Because um, what we're still talking about is this being you know, overcoming whatever trials and tribulations and building our own self-sufficient economy in Africa, nations, business, communities, and so on. All right. All right, then if nobody else have anything to share, you know, I'm gonna close on that note. And uh, so appreciate everybody joining the call and everyone take care of themselves. And I will keep you posted. And next time we'll be on the land is December 29th, where we show you some underground footage. And as soon as we get those recordings, we'll do our best to just upload and share on the YouTube channel and on this uh, YouTube playlist where all of these um, Black Star Pan African community videos are always uploaded. So, family, uh, take care. Good night. And um, the journey continues. And if you need to connect with me about, our community just reach out to me directly and we can just have a direct call and talk and just uh, go from there. Uh, and I'll let everyone know that this is something that we're dedicated to and uh, nothing is gonna stop us from building this uh, community energy and we're gonna keep it strong. All right, so family, uh, good night.